Hey guys, and welcome back to Peck Pong, channel where I talk about match reviews, things that I do to try to get better, as well as some things that might help you get better too. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a topic that I think is really important uh, for me to get better and for you to get better, and it's ball placement and the kind of situations that you need to uh, think about to avoid your opponent from getting an upper hand and also get the upper hand during the point. Not really talked about as much as I think it should be. So uh, yeah, let's just get started and talk about the placements. So the first topic is the ability to block wide to the opponent's backhand. I've been doing a lot of blocking practice lately where my opponent can hit anywhere and I'm trying to um, make a, a quick reaction and be able to block right back to the certain spot on the table. And so far the improvement has been pretty good. The placement of the block, it can be tricky, mainly because the opponent is usually getting a pretty strong attack on you and also because you don't really know where that attack is gonna go. That being said, it's important to not let your opponent get another shot like that right after they got the first one. So having really good placement on that block is really important. If you're able to block to the wide backhand, it forces your opponent to either A, play a backhand, B, to move way over and hit another forehand, uh, which then probably opens up the table for you to get a, a finishing block in. This can really switch up the dynamic of the point and turn it into a, your, your favor um, right after they felt like they were about to win the point these videos here, you can see Kamal against Malong, and when Kamal blocks the first ball, he's not able to get it out of reach for Malong to hit another forehand, and it consequently loses him the point because Malong is able to get that second forehand in. And in this video here, you can see how Malong is able to uh, swing the momentum of the, of the point into his favor because Malong is able to get the ball super wide to Kamal's backhand, and he isn't able to get a forehand off, he consequently loses the point, which is a really good use of the wide block to the backhand. Here you can see I'm doing a drill where I practice blocking as wide as I can to Sarah's backhand, and basically she just stands in the backhand corner and loops anywhere on the table, and it's my job to um, try to keep my hand in front and make a quick reaction and block it as wide as I can to the backhand. Some things that I feel are really important uh, as, the, as far as the technique and fundamentals go of blocking are to, yeah, keep your hand in front and to not move your hand until you see where the ball is going. And three, I think the uh, good practice is to touch the ball in front of the body. If you're touching the ball on the side of the body, you have a longer distance to travel with your hand and you also don't have as good a vision because you're hitting on the side of your body. The next topic is placement when the opponent flips wide to the forehand. The backhand flip to the wide forehand can be a really devastating shot and can really move the opponent out of position. That being said, it's really important for the opponent being moved out wide to make really good placement to avoid um, a killing block on the very next shot. If I'm not able to place it well when they get me out wide, then it makes it really hard for me to stay in the point. So a really good strategy to uh, stay in the point is to play it back cross court really wide. And what this stops your opponent from doing is it stops them from getting a block to the other corner. In this drill with Sarah, I serve and she's practicing flipping wide to either corner. And then my goal is to try and play back wide uh, when she gets me out wide of the forehand. And it's important uh, to have her flip sometimes to my backhand because then it keeps me honest and it stops me from uh, prematurely moving wide of the forehand, so. The next topic here, the ability to loop or attack wide to the backhand. The placement on the modern backhand is very important because backhands are generally getting stronger and if poor placement is used, uh, strong players will be able to capitalize on that and uh, win the points. 
One common tactic is to play to the opponent's middle or wide backhand and to alternate between the two. And what this does is it gets your opponent out of position for the next shot. It also gets them off balance, so they're more likely to miss a shot. And three, it uh, stops them from getting a winning shot or a strong shot. One thing I've experienced in the last year or so is that when I play against good players, I need to really focus on the placement of the ball to their backhand because it's not enough to just play the ball dire directly to their uh, backhand because they're able to, it's too predictable and they're able to capitalize on that. In this drill, I'm playing with Sid. He blocks 50% of the table and my, my goal is to play middle or wide. And I really like that the fact that he can play 50% of the table to me because uh, it's not, it's a bit too easy to play the ball to the middle or wide when they play to the same spot. But if they're kind of challenging you with those small micro movements, um, your hand has to be able to adjust and make the very small adjustments to play middle or wide. And one thing I think is really important to be able to play wide is that you should add a lot of spin because the table gets pretty short the wider you go. So bringing spin to play helps bring the ball down. I had the opportunity to practice with the US national team a few years ago and Jorg was the head coach and I was also playing against Nikhil who was in this picture. And I was having a very hard time uh, getting into the point after he served. And Jorg came over and he said, Seth, I could have dinner by the time you decide to receive the serve and get it back into position. And I think it's pretty funny, but what he meant was that I was receiving the serve and I was watching to see if I would make the serve before I would get back into position. So he said that I should trust that I'll make the serve and get back into position and yeah, just trust that I'll make the ball on the table. So thank you, Jorg, for that tip. Uh, I still remember and I still practice it. It did not fall on deaf ears. In this drill, I really focus on making a good return and moving out and really trusting that I'll, I'll make the return on. And yeah, it's pretty simple. You just have to set it up and make it a habit because I feel like it's, it's a habit you can develop the wrong way or a habit you can develop the right way. Our next topic is more spin on the backhand loop. I was debating whether or not to put this in the video, but I really feel like it's important and I think it's worth mentioning. I was able to practice with Sharon Algetti at a tournament and immediately I noticed that the spin on his ball, um, especially from his backhand, was a lot more than I anticipated. And that got me thinking, like, why, why does he feel like he needs to have that much spin? And what I came up with is that it lets him control the ball more. So it lets him have better placements, like I talked about earlier. It also stops his opponents from giving him any kind of weird ball. So like if they give him a little bit dead or a little bit more top spin or a little bit of side spin, he has enough spin to uh, kind of overturn the ball and to kind of dictate where the ball goes. So in this drill, Sharon is basically just uh, blocking 50% of the table and he's doing a lot of variations like some top spin, some dead blocks, and he's mixing up the, the speed of the ball as well. And my goal was just to uh, make as much spin as possible and really focus on the timing because when you, it's different than making up spin, which is what I'm not talking about. I'm talking about making more friction when you touch the ball. So you can play the ball pretty forward, uh, but you still make more spin than, it, than as if you were to drive through the ball. You really focus on making good friction when you touch the ball. I had him give me like a forehand slide to my backhand because I was having a lot of trouble with it in the tournament against uh, Chance, who I play quite often. So what I was doing to, to get the ball on is that I was waiting a little bit longer and I was spinning a little bit more on the side of the ball. And that really seems to help me with the timing and to counteract the spin that's, the side spin that's on the ball. And, 
And that's the video. I hope you got something from that. Um, I really feel like these are things that I could improve and I feel like other people can improve them too. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for the next one and I hope to see you soon.